Statue of me right in the center of campus. Oh, oh. <laughs> well, listen, when you wrote and told me what they were doing to honor father, well, I was so proud I could buzz. Well, we didn't know about it ourselves. It was just a couple of days ago. <laughs> Dave Wallace wrote over and calmly said, if we didn't mind, the townspeople would like to do something to honor father. If we didn't mind. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome home, Mr. Eugene. <laughs> my, my, you've grown a whole foot. Oh, I hope not, Silas. Now, wait in there. I'll be right with you. Come on in here, Gene. Let's take Get a look. Right over there. That's it. Now turn around here, boy. Let's see what's been what's happening this? to you. You know, Nick, I think he's grown a little bit. Oh, just in the head. Oh, he always did have a bit of a fat head. Well, now, is that so? Hey, where's he? Oh, he's around somewhere. I think I'll go out and sign <laughs> him up. <laughs> Sit down right over here. Gene, Sit Mother down. said you were to wait. Oh, wait for what? Uh, just wait. Ah, here we are. Father's? Mm -hmm. He wore them on special occasions. I know you think I'm being sentimental, but... It would make me very happy if you would wear them this evening at the commemoration. I'll have you know I often cut off my big toe, but... Uh, <laughs> and I'm a size larger than Jared, so it's up to you, little brother. Now, sit down there and slip them on. Come yeah, on. I'll try. They uh, look a little small. Well, come on now. Let's see what happens. Come on. Come on, Eugene. I'm trying it. <clears throat> come on. You're a little too tight. Come yeah, on, pull Eugene. them on. Come oh. on. <clears throat> a little harder. Oh, I'm sorry, Mother. It was a silly, sentimental idea to begin with. Oh, no, no, no. Hey, what about Heath? He's a Barkley son, too. He'd wear them. I know he would. He'd be proud to wear them. Silas, did Eugene get in? In there. Ha. Gene, you old son of a gun. How are you? <laughs> Boy, how do you have grown a foot? It seems that all that knowledge went to my feet. They were father's heat. Mother'd like one of us to wear them to the commemoration this evening. Well, go ahead, try them on. Looks like the best foot wins, huh? <laughs> Congratulations, Heath. <laughs> Heath, it seems to me we have forgotten one small detail. Whether or not you'd like to wear them. Well, sure I would. Of course I would. Why wouldn't I? It's uh, just that... I'd kind of like to have a chance to think it through. I don't much go for fancy boots. Maybe some other time.
up off that bed. Gene, I don't owe you any explanations. Get up off that bed. Now, if you'll just simmer down. Gene, I don't want to fight you. All right, now, take it easy. If I were in his shoes, I might feel the same way. So might you. Now, get it. Come on. Thanks, Nick. I said I might feel the same way. If you're going with us, you better get dressed. Keith, if you'd rather not go, we'll all understand. Maybe it's hard for me to forgive Tom Barkley for what he did. But whatever he was to me, to my mother, I know he was a great man to the people in this valley. So as a part of this family now, I'd kind of like to go along and honor him for that, if it's all right with you. Wait till it's unveiled. It's a little early in the morn to start celebrating. I'm sorry. The last thing in the world I want to do is hurt you. Maybe I shouldn't have come. But I thought it, I could just sit on what I feel, at least for one day, this day. I brought them with me, the boots. You'd wear them? Say the word. I told you I understood how you feel. Maybe I more than understand. Maybe I'm afraid you have a right to feel the way you do, but thank you for offering. I'd do anything for you. Anything. You know that, don't you? And I meant what I said. Whatever he was to me, to my mother, I know he was a great man to others, to his children, to you. He was a great man, a wonderful father. A wonderful father and husband. I never meant for you to question that. Tell me about your mother. She was beautiful, warm and soft, and in a way very strong, like you. 
And your father. Of course, you never knew who he was until the end, but... Did she ever talk about him, the man who was your father? I don't remember. But you must have asked when you were a little boy growing up. You must have wondered. It's over. History, ancient history. Don't dig it up. And if I have to... We'd only been married a few years when Tom went to Strawberry. He'd invested in some mines. We weren't rich then, but... Strawberry was the beginning. He sold his interest, made a good profit, and went on from there. Yes, Strawberry was the beginning. Did your mother love him? Oh, please, Heath, I've got to know. When I was a boy, Strawberry was a boom town, busting with life. Then the mind slowly gave out. Now it's all but a ghost town living with memories. When I was a boy, it seemed my mother laughed a lot talked a lot about him. Talked in a way that made me think my father was the greatest man who ever lived. If he did love her, then I've been lying to myself, haven't I? You can't say that. Whatever he was to my mother, you know what he was to you. Do I? Can I ever be sure? Do any of your people still live in Strawberry? Just ain't Rachel. Rachel Caulfield. She's not my real aunt, but she's all the family we ever had. Or needed. She was my mother's best friend. And mine. Ain't Rachel and Hannah, they, uh, they helped raise me. There was no one else? Not that I can remember. If there was, they, uh, they left long ago. There is somebody else, but... Tell me. My Uncle Matt and his wife. We weren't close. I hardly ever saw them, and that was too often. Please, let it die. Sometimes, sometimes a thing just won't die. Your father and I were married so happily for over 25 years. And if most of those years I was lying to myself, oh, Heath, I've just got to know, for both of us, Luck's really run out. I can't even be myself a solitaire. I'm gonna pay you. I think I'm gonna run out of time sticking with a couple of beers. Three today, two from yesterday, when you was uh, a little short. George, I ain't never tried to beat you up. Now, don't of... tell me your well, troubles. I... I ain't getting rich around here, neither. <laughs> I'd like to get paid tomorrow, not the day after tomorrow. Tomorrow or no more beer. Oh, 
Lose your way, man? Oh, not if this is strawberry. Well, it was strawberry, but now, well, you name it. I'm looking for a woman named Rachel Caulfield. Rachel Caulfield. Do you huh? happen to know her? Oh, knew her real well. Yeah. Knew? Well, she's dead. Oh, well, uh, when did it happen? Oh, about a month and a half ago. How? Oh, she's dead, ma'am. That's all I know for sure. Oh. Uh, it's mighty hot out there. Could I sell you something no, cool to drink, no. maybe? Uh, do you know a woman named Hannah? Oh, yes, yes. Uh, a little uh, green cabin, uh, picket fence in front, right out the edge of town. Oh, Can't yeah. hardly miss it. Oh, uh, could I sell you something cool no, to drink? Thanks. Maybe you look like... You... Mighty handsome woman, Martha. Too much woman for him. Um, now, yeah. Can I give you a hand? <laughs> You'd like to, wouldn't you? <laughs> well, that's no secret. Hey, why don't we, uh, why don't we go away together? Find ourselves a new life, a good life. said, a lot of women. You know, uh, you're the only thing that keeps me tied to this town. Oh, all the time I thought you were counting on finding a good vein of ore. Yeah. And I'll bet if I did hit pay dirt, you'd come running to me, wouldn't you? Maybe, but you're not going to find, uh, find it sitting there polishing that rifle and uh, shooting the sign across the street. I thought I told you not to fire that thing in here. Is that right, man? You ought no better let him do that. Sure, because one day he's going to kill somebody and they're going to march in here and sue us for every cent we haven't got. We got something to talk about and I'll get him out of here. Uh, Mr. Phelps, I think the man would like you to leave. Hmm. Is that right? Ain't you got nothing better to do than hang around here wasting our time? What's the matter, Matt? You expecting a big rush of business? Like maybe one check-in? Like I said, Mr. Phelps, if it's gold you're looking for, you're not going to find it in here. Well, maybe not gold. But there are other things. If you're looking at me, I'm not about to exchange one failure for another. <laughs> now, clear out. My husband wants to talk to me alone. You said I was leading him on. Now, what did you want to talk to me about? She's here, in Strawberry. Victoria Barclay. You sure? She asked Walter where Rachel was. Wally should have sold her a shovel and told her to start digging. Don't laugh about that, Martha. Don't you ever laugh about all right, that. All right, Matt, I won't laugh. <laughs> but I'm not going to cry over spilt milk either. She went over to see Hannah. She'll ask questions. Sniff around. Oh, what does Hannah know? And whatever she suspects, a half-mad old woman like that. <gasps> hey, Matt. Maybe. Maybe it was Providence that brought Victoria Barclay here. Oh, Martha. Uh, after what happened, I thought we decided. You we decided. You, you, you decided. Because you're a man with the spine of a worm, I let you make that decision. But now that she's here. No matter what a reason, she's come to us. <laughs> I'm not about to let her slip through my fingers. Pardon me. Mr. 
Miss Lee. Lord in heaven, Miss Lee. For a minute, I thought you was Heath's mother. Miss Lee. She dead. And Rachel, she dead too. Both my good friends is dead. Maybe they kill me too. Who you be? I'm Victoria Barclay, and you're Hannah. Heath told me about you and Rachel. You know about Heath? He lives with me now, with me and my family. He all right? Oh, he's fine. That's all that matters. He's fine. That's all that matters. He's fine. Heath tells me you and Rachel helped raise him. Me help. Miss Leah, she work hard. But a boy growing up without a father. Do you remember his father? It was different then. Everything different. Miss Leah, she was young and so pretty. Could have had most any man. She picked that one. Then you knew him. He give her a child, his child, and he'd go away and leave her, never come back. He was married, did you know that? People say she bad. A woman have a baby with no father to claim him. People say she bad. Did he know about the baby? She was a good woman. She loved that man. It can't be bad when a woman loves a man like she did. Can it? No. No, if she loved him the way you say she did, she couldn't have been bad. And he, if, if he loved her the same way, did he love her? He was my husband. She loved him. She loved him very much. Hannah, did he love her? She was a good woman, Miss Lear. You believe that, don't you? Yes. Yes, I believe that. He tells me his Uncle Matt still lives here. Could you tell me where I might find him? Tell me where I can find Heath's uncle and aunt. What you want with Things, them? things you can't tell me. Leave them be. If they're here, I'll find them. They're at the hotel. Thank you. Stay away from them, hear? Hannah, what are you afraid of? Leave me be. Leave this place. Let the dead rest in peace and the living to the time they got. Leave me be. Leave this place. Leave them be, miss. Leave them be. Dinner with the mayor. Actually, I don't suppose a low-cut dress would be quite the thing. Uh, did she have to say when she'd be back? 
Well, she probably went shopping or visiting or something. She'll be back. Yeah, when she gets here, let us know. We'll be downstairs in the bar. Get rid of the dress. You uh, bought and paid for that, huh? Yes. There, uh, hoping that you'd come by. Yes, I wanted to see where Heath grew up and talk to people who knew him. It's our pleasure, Mrs. Barkley. Um, I have a pot of coffee, oh, Perkins. Coffee would be very nice. It may not be as good it as it will the... be fine, thank you. Uh, will you have a seat? Uh, take that chair there. I think you'll find that more comfortable. Is that all right? Thank you. We heard that you'd taken Heath in. It's right kind of you. Yes, sir. He's a very lucky boy, but... But then you're a fine woman, Mrs. Barkley, taking an orphan in like that. Not very many people that high-minded enough to accept that kind of moral obligation, but... I, I can understand it. Uh, I've got some biscuits. No, thank you. Yes, we, uh, Matt and I, I, we can understand how it is. We never thought to press you about this, Mrs. Barkley, but if you felt you owed Heath something, you know, you owe us something, too, for keeping him alive. Oh, you helped Heath and his mother financially? Yes, we kept both her and the boy you've taken into your home after your husband ran out on them. And now you'd like to be repaid for your sacrifice. Well, we leave that to you, ma'am. Don't you think we deserve that? How much? Well, you seem to be more than a fair-minded woman, Mrs. Barclay. Uh, why don't we just leave that up to you? Because it's, it's very difficult to put a value on what we did for them. Would $5,000 be enough? Well, I'm sure $5,000 would be... More than enough. All right. But first, there are some questions I would like you to answer. That is, if you don't mind. No, no, of course we don't mind. Did you know Tom Barkley? I know him very well. He come courting my sister. We've seen him often, yes. Where did they meet? In a bar. Uh, my sister, Leah, worked in a bar. She was a waitress in this bar. I don't take that as anything else. I didn't even want her to work in that place. So they met in a bar. I suppose my husband dropped in for a drink. Uh, maybe so, yes. And one thing led to another. Just what are you driving at, Mrs. Barclay? I would hope the truth, Mrs. Simmons. Oh, I... I see what you're getting at. You'd like to believe that Leah was cheap, right? I didn't even suggest. You'd like to make it out that she went with all sorts of men, that, that Leah was nothing more than a little entertainment as Martha, far as your husband. I don't would... see any reason for it. No, that, that, that was the reason that you came here for, isn't it? Was the loving husband in love with another woman all the time he was with you? Well, if you want the truth, I'll tell it, Mrs. Barclay. I'm sure you will, Mrs. Simmons. You bet he loved her. And any fool who cared to look could see it. Loved her the way all of us would love to be loved and never are. And when she was carrying Heath, carrying his child, it became a special kind of love. If he loved her, if he knew about the child, why did he desert her? Your husband was a shrewd man, Mrs. Barclay. 
He wanted to become rich and powerful. And a man like that, no matter how much he loves, has to be ruthless. My husband ruth never hurt her. Ruthless, ruthless and clever, the way all rich and powerful men must be. No, he had a wife and family. And he was, he was on his way to making that fortune when he left Strawberry. He wasn't about to take a millstone around his neck, a woman carrying his illegitimate child. Now you, uh, you're about to write that check, Mrs. Barclay. My son, Jared, is a lawyer, and for years he's been lecturing me to think before I scrawled my name on the bottom of a check, and I, I think it's finally sunk in, so, uh, you won't mind if I think about this a bit, will you? Just had to cut her down, didn't she? She was all ready to write that check, but you had to twist the knife in her gut and bleed her. She hasn't left yet. As she will, she'll take the money with her. All right. All right. Maybe she thinks I lied about Leah. Maybe she thinks she does, but she doesn't know. She doesn't know, and if I know her, she's got to know. Now we're gonna have another chance with Victoria Barclay next time. Oh, no, Martha, no. We can't you let her go. Rachel's dead and nobody suspects a thing. We're gonna leave it that way. You can leave it that way, but I can't. No matter what the risk is, I've got to have my chance to escape from this, this cemetery. Matt, I'm, I'm still an attractive woman. There are men who could love me, but, but not this way, not with, not, not with the dust eating away at my clothes and... Matt, I, I had soft skin once. My hair... I've got to be a woman again! Now, it's with you, I've got to have enough money to make a fresh start. And as long as Victoria Barclay is in town, I've still got a chance, Matt. Walk on over to the house. I meet you there. Right, she is staying. Put a carriage in the stable. Name my heaven, Martha. What good is that? We can't keep her here. We can try, Matt. I told you I was getting out of here with or without you. I'm sick and tired of being tied to a failure, stuck to a man who's too scared to even try. Now do as I say. Do as I say, or I'll find a man who will. your husband's letter. It's just got to be. Hannah, Mr. and Mrs. Simmons told me that my husband met Heath's mother in a bar. Your husband? He never come looking for Miss Lear. She found him in an alley back of one of the saloons. He was beaten near half to death and robbed. Lucky he wasn't killed. There was lots of killings those days. She took him home. Made him well. They also told me they took care of Leah and the baby. 
<laughs> that woman never cared for nobody but herself. And from the looks of it, she ain't doing too good a job of that. They've asked me for some money. You don't think they deserve it? I'll tell you what them two deserves. No. It don't make no difference now. Rachel's dead now. Ain't nothing ever gonna bring her back. Hannah, did my husband love Leah? Everybody loved her, Miss Barclay. She was small and so pretty. And when she laughed, she had the nicest laugh. But most of all, ma'am, she was a good woman. She was a good woman. I'm sure of that. I'm sorry, Miss Parker. But I can't tell you what you ask. I don't know did he love her or not. Maybe only the two of them know that. And Rachel, she know. But Rachel dead now. Maybe it's best you go, miss. Not until you find that letter. It's gone now. It's gone, you hear? You go too before... Before what? <laughs> you stubborn, all right. Ain't nothing gonna turn you back, is there? Hannah, when I first spoke to you, you said you were afraid they might kill you, too. Now, why would Mr. and Mrs. Simmons want to kill you? I didn't say they wanted to. You didn't say they killed Rachel, but you think they did. What happened to her? It's no use. It's gone. I'm not leaving here until you tell me what happened to Rachel. <laughs> I guess I knows that. When we hear Heath was living with you, them two, they want to ask you for money. They want to bother you. Rachel, she stop them. She say Miss Leah would have wanted it that way. A little while later, they find Rachel dead. She went and fell into a mine shaft. Law should have been called, but nobody cared enough. And me, I was, I was too scared lest they throws me in the bottom of the mine shaft, too. I can't read. Shows I don't know what's in here. But maybe this will answer some of your questions about your husband and Miss Lear. Thank you. Miss Barclay, you want to thank me good and proper? You read what's in here, and you get yourself out of this place. If the answer to your question ain't in this letter, then there ain't no answer for you. Not in this world. Anyway. Thank you. It's not like Mother to just leave without saying a word and not tell us where she's going. It's all my fault. I was so busy admiring myself and trying on my new wardrobe. Oh, no, don't be silly. Did she say anything to you before she left? She said she might visit a few of her friends and... And not to worry. But I was so busy looking at myself, I didn't think to ask her what friends. I don't think she wanted us to know where she was going. Simmons. Yes. My, uh, 
carriage, Mr. Simmons. Now, Mr. Simmons. Right now. Stable. I'll take you there. Well, Mrs. Barclay, I trust Hannah told you everything you wanted to know. Yes, everything. Then if you'll write that check, you can be on your way. I'm afraid you'll have to be a little patient. There are several details that must be ironed out. What did the half-mad old woman tell you? Oh, she's not quite sure you helped out as much as you claim. Oh? All right. You offered us $5,000, Mrs. Barclay. We'll settle for half. Well, that's a very fair offer. I'd accept it if I were you. I'm sorry, but I'll have to think it over. What did she tell you? Some crazy story about how Rachel went and got herself... Shut up, man. Shut said. up! It's an accident. Rachel died in an accident. I'm sure it was. Mrs. Barclay, I must understand we were just taking her for an outing. Now she wandered away from us, fell through some rotted boards into an abandoned mine shaft. That's the way it happened. Well, we'll just have to take you to where it happened, and we'll just have to show you how it happened. Oh, it's bad enough leaving here without repaying us for what we did for Heath and his mother, but leaving here thinking we're murderers. Why, Mrs. Barclay, we can't have that. I don't know what you have in mind, but I have four sons. They'll come looking for oh, me. I'm sure they and will. they'll find me. Matt, help the lady. Oh! <laughs> Nothing, nothing. Nice seeing you again, Uncle Matt. Hey, Martha. Where's the carriage? In the stable. Let's go. got to be stopped. You always said nobody could prove anything, so I guess there's nothing to worry about, is there, Martha? To be heading through Shadow Mountain. Good place to arrange another accident. I'm not gonna stay here and wait. You better get out. I've had my fill of killing. Tell you something else, Martha. Whatever you had in mind for Mrs. Barclay, I think I would have stopped you. Why, you poor miserable soul! You nothing. You're not a man. You're not even half a man. You're nothing. You're a weak, groveling nothing. Half a man. Half a man. When you were born, you were nothing. And when you die, you're nothing. Nothing. was from the beginning. Just like this. What is it you want me to do, Martha? Kill them. <laughs> oh, I knew there was a catch. They can hurt me. And you think that's reason enough for me to... Mm. Us. Us, they can hurt us. Well, that's a little better. You see? All my practicing with the rifle's gonna come in handy.
should have told me. No, I couldn't take that chance. You might have killed them. No, no, we'll tell Jared, and if there's a way, the law will be back for them. There was something else, Heath. A letter. It told me everything. I want you to know, too. May I read part of it to you? You're a wonderful woman, Leah. Perhaps the only woman in the world I could have loved as much as I love my wife. And someday, very soon, I hope you'll meet someone. You'll fall in love as you deserve, and he will love you as you deserve to be loved. And you'll be as happy as I am, as proud as I am of my family. You must marry Leah. You must have children. You were meant for that. And he didn't know. No. No, he didn't know about you. Sorry, we couldn't get back in time for the ceremony. It doesn't matter. It's a fine-looking statue. Yes. Ma! Father, we've been looking all over for you. Where have you Mother! been? Mother! Hey, you're wearing them. Father's boots. Come on, we'll get some of that champagne. <laughs>
going to faint or anything. I don't think. I wouldn't blame you if you did. All I wanted, really, was to get a closer look at that black stallion. Oh, he was beautiful. I uh, didn't mean to get that close. I did. I was trying to catch him. Oh, I'm sorry. No hurry. Tomorrow's another day. I'll get him. For yourself? For sale, after I break him. Is that your work? Right now it is. Hey, Lord! We better get after the horses. <laughs> Get out of those wet clothes as soon as you can. That's exactly what I was thinking. Thank you. I'd risk my own neck for a gal as fetching as that one. You got a one-track mind, Turk. Maybe, but if I'm going to be tromped on by horses, there better be some more pay in it than just a thank you. We're new in this valley. We can use a good reputation. You mean that's the reason you say that, gal? For a good reputation? <laughs> it's getting late. Let's forget the horses and get back to the others. We'll hit that farm as soon as it's dark. <laughs> Your hair, it's all wet. Where have you been? Riding. Through the swamp? Alongside the stream in McCollamy. Well, you surely you didn't fall in. As it happens, I was, well, pushed in by a young man. Who? I guess it was probably the most thrilling experience of my whole life. It uh, wasn't Amos Carver's son, Tad, was it? Sounds like the kind of trick he'd pull. <laughs> I don't think it's anyone you know, Nick. No? Well, oh, try me. Many people in this valley I don't know, you know. Now, uh, let's see. Was it, uh, Chet Beamish? Why must you assume it has to be someone you know? Uh, Audra, if you were dunked, we are merely trying to find out who did the dunking. He didn't dunk me. He saved my life. Saved your life? from a herd of wild horses. Well, why in blazes didn't you say so? Because you didn't give me a chance. As usual, you were all more interested in finding out whether your little sister, who happens to be well able to take care of herself, was pushed into the water by the right kind of man. Your kind, not necessarily mine. All right, all right. Audra, we're very sorry. Uh, but who was he? Whoever he was, I'm very grateful to him. I'd like to meet him and tell him so. I forgot to ask his name. <laughs> Lloyd, I think. But I'd know him in a minute. I mean, you just can't forget what he looks like. I don't know, just there's something so different about him. How'd he happen to be up there on the McCollamy? He catches wild horses, sells them when they're broken. You seem to know quite a lot about him. I'd like to know more.
much more can a man take? I was working on my books when it comes through the window like a thunderbolt. When I got out there, they was gone. Has this happened to anyone else, Harry? Two, three of my friends. Graf, Bauer, Jamie Drum. I don't know of anyone else. How did they answer? Like the note said, I guess. What choice have we got, Nick? You either pay or you see a lifetime of sweat go up and smoke. And that's still your choice? I don't know, Victoria. I paid them all I've got. When you hear that pack of hounds coming, your blood turns to water. And you pray for God's wrath to strike them dead. I'd say you better start shooting first, pray later. They'd wipe me out. And Margaret, and the kids. Yeah, this won't solve any problems, but it might settle that stomach of yours. You're all saying the same as Nick. Shoot it out with him. It may not come to that if they know you have help. My boys, some of our hands, the sheriff. Jamie Drum went to the sheriff last week. They got wind of it. Burned his barley field and fouled his well. The sheriff ain't even a notion who they could be. Nor you. All I ever seen was notes like this. Not even a guess. You're welcome to this if you feel you have to pay. They'd burn me out if I didn't. Oh, I know they did damage enough to frighten you. But I believe men like that back away when they see you're determined not to yield. Now, you were free the first time, but once you paid... Well, here's the money. I don't believe I'll be needing that, Victoria. Harry. First thing tomorrow, we'll find that pack and drive them right into the river. I'll be waiting for you. I guess all I ever really needed was to open up to folks who don't scare. Thank you. Good night. How'd they treat you, those folks at the big house? Were they understanding? How much they give you? Nothing. You get no more from me. Is that what those Barclays told you to say? Maybe you forgot to tell them how we've been protecting you. By sucking their life out of me. Like you've done to the others. You pay only for protection. You're not being very sensible accusing us of anything else. I'll accuse you, all right. You're all a bunch of thieving hoodlums. Scum. I'm going to prove it. I, I know you. I've seen you in town. Tomorrow morning, I'm going to go. Something stronger tonight in coffee, Lloyd. You nervous, Turk? Because I'm not. 
Wasn't what you planned, killing that farmer, was it? Anyone else worrying about what happened tonight? Ain't worried, Lloyd. They're gonna be looking for his killer. They won't look here unless we give them cause. We're following our respectable traders, Mustangers, for a couple of days. We'll be busy breaking them for shipping to the cavalry after that. What about them other farmers, Lloyd? You gonna forget about them? I'm forgetting nothing, Turk. And I'm gonna make sure they don't forget us. Or talk back like Coleman did this evening. Those words are put in his mouth by the Barclays. So it's as soon as we're ready, we're going after them. Might be shooting a little high, Lloyd. We own half this valley. And if we get them, we'll own the other half. Farmers around here don't think for themselves. They turn to the Barclays the way Coleman did. There's nothing can stop us once we get the Barclays. Big plan like that's just what I've been waiting to hear, Lloyd. We're starting out early after those ponies. Let's get some sleep. <laughs> Lloyd? Boys are all with you, Lloyd. They'd better be. They know where they'd be without me. Where are we going when we leave here, Lloyd? Don't tell me you're homesick. Ain't you? For what? There's nothing left in the South for any of us, Fancy. Don't you ever think about it? Your home? Your family? I only think about tomorrow, not yesterday. Find what I'm looking for right here. It'll be big. It's got to be big, or I might as well be dead. Leaving our dead in the hands of the all loving Father, we pray for his strength to endure and his guidance on the way. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and bring you peace. Amen. Margaret, don't touch me. You just leave us alone. Hugh Barclays are to blame that he's dead. He come to you for help. Instead, you told him to stand up to them. Like a fool, he listened to you. All the help he got from you was a bullet. And you killed him just as sure as if you'd shot him down yourselves. Come, Chuck. Let's go home. say that. All we did is tell him how we felt about it. And besides, you offered him the money. Would that change the fact that we influenced him not to accept it? I don't think we can blame ourselves. What else could we have done? I don't know, but what we did was too easy. We weren't in Harry's shoes. We didn't have to face what he faced or lived with his fear. I thought I understood how he felt. I didn't. All right, if we went too far, then there's only one thing to do now. Go further. Now, I don't know how much Harry knew about that gang, but it's certain the others he mentioned must know a little. If they'll talk after this. They've got to talk. Asking men to risk their lives and without any more law to protect them than Harry had? No, no, I don't think you can expect that of them, Nick. I do, because I expect it of myself. And I'd say the same thing to Harry right now if he were alive. They might talk if every farmer in the valley agreed to stand with them. But that would take time, and they're bound to be holdouts too frightened to join in. No. No, I think one man might be enough. One man? How? If he had the courage to refuse to pay and knew that we were with him, he might act as a decoy and bring him out in the open. Sweet as honeysuckle, Graf. What are you getting for tokays now? Price don't change much. 45 cents a crate, about. Less what you pay those jackals for letting them ripen, huh? Graf. Yeah. 
How long are you gonna stand still and let that gang of killers squeeze you dry? And they will, you know, just like that. Nick, I got a little place. I work hard. Graf, we could trap that gang if someone were willing to go along as a decoy, and you wouldn't be alone. We'd be there waiting for them when they came. It ain't that I'm scared, Nick, but I gotta think of Lottie. I don't want to have her left a widow like Margaret Coleman. You can't say for sure she won't. No, I can't. I wish I could. You're asking too much of me. It would be willing enough I'd be to do it if I was a single man. But none of us is that. It's a big valley, this. And there's nights with not a body for miles around. Well, there won't be any more nights like that, Jamie. We'll have all the guns we need. Aye, but they're shrewd. Never a sight of them do you see when you expect to. Jamie, have you ever seen any of them face to face? Never. Just the masked and hooded men coming at night, asking pay to protect me. A man must be prepared to die if he's to be their decoy. And I'm not brave enough for it. We'd do it in your place if we could, Jamie. Aye, right, but they, when they go after a Barclay, in their evil way, because their dirty hands are in my pocket, they let me live. Just modified, sir, but my dance program's filled to the very last waltz. Some other time. Uh, Woo! Dee Claire, I'm just about the most sought after belle of the governor's ball. Buy it for me, Lord, honey. How much? Well, that one's kind of high. Fourteen dollars. Ain't too high for someone you love. Put it on the bill. <laughs> Looks like you were covered. Oh, yes. No ill effects at all. Did you? I never felt better. I was going to look for you. My mother would like very much to thank you. Well, I, I'm not much of a hand at being thanked. I think she'd understand that. I reckon she would if she's at all like you. Order's all ready for you, Miss Audra. Got the buggy outside? No, just my horse. Might be a little too much for just the one horse. But not for two. Where do you live? Oh, it's not for me. It's for the Coleman's. That's the man that we shot the other night. I'm just taking a few things over for his family. That's uh, very thoughtful of you. Oh, I... I guess we forgot to introduce each other. I'm Lloyd Garner. I'm Audra Barkley. Some things I thought you might need. Your family's conscience bothering them, Audra. Gifts won't heal it. You just take what you brought and get off this place. And don't any of you Barclays ever come back here again.
Don't take it too hard, Audra. She didn't mean it. She does. And she has every right. My family told her husband to stand up to those men who shot him. about it tomorrow. Will she? She just needs a little time, that's all. I'd still like you to meet my mother. Would you have supper with us? All right. Tomorrow night? It'd be a pleasure. Do you know where we live? It's the first thing you learn when you come into this valley. Would you come in, please? Lloyd. Dinner's going to be late. I, I hope you don't mind. The family's busy with a visitor. Whiskey? Brandy? No. I don't drink much, thank you. Cider, how's that? Just fine. Why don't you sit over here? It's my father's favorite chair. doing here? I know you catch wild horses, but where's your family? You really do want to know about me? Everything. Well, for one thing, I have no family, no home since I was 10. The kind I did have died. I was killed when the South was overrun and the Union Army marched to the sea. I'm sorry. That was a long time ago. How did you live? Same way as the soldiers. Off the country. Foraging. Sleeping in fields, caves. Running. Always running. Just anywhere. To get away. To hide. There was a few of us stuck together. Safety in numbers, we thought. Kept moving. Always moving westward. Have you stopped running? Perhaps. Guess I could settle in a place like this. It reminds me of home. Where do you live now? We have a camp. Not that way. Beside the Calaveras. It's good grazing for the horses. Until they're ready for I'm sale. I'm glad you changed your mind, Jamie. You're a very brave man. It's not so brave I am as practical. But I must keep myself respectful. You won't be alone, Jamie. We promise you that. Thank you. I've kept you from your supper. Won't you join us? Thank you, but I'll eat at my own hearth and enjoy it for the first time in many a day. Good night. Good night, Jamie. Good night. Good night. We're late. Do forgive us. Audra's made it. Time fly, Mrs. Barkley. This is Lloyd Gardner, Mother. I'm glad to meet you. And you must know how very grateful I am to you. Audra told you me don't how Don't embarrass you... him, Mother. Well, a mother's gratitude, thank you. This is my brother, Jared Lloyd. How do you do? And Nick and he. Hello? Eddie. Oh, I uh, hear you have a way with horses. I think so. May I offer you a drink? No, thank you. Well, now, Mr. Gardner, where are you from? Georgia. Georgia? Well, you're a long way from home. Oh. Home's been most any part of the country with me for quite some time now. Tennessee, Kansas, New Mexico. New Mexico? Have you ever been to Santa Fe? Yes. 
Well, I have a very good friend there. His name is Miguel Escobar, raises cattle. You don't by some chance know him. Please stop interrogating him, Jared. <laughs> well, I certainly hope it didn't seem like an interrogation to you. Not at all. Come on. You must be starved. That all you can say, that it isn't what you tell that Barkley gal. That's enough, Francie. Hey, Lloyd. What are you on? We're riding out the flats tomorrow to pick up the money from that farmer. You going with us? You can forget it. I saw him. He was at the Barclays. And they're setting a trap. We go up there. Every farmer, every deputy in the valley be waiting for us. Does that include the Barclays? They won't stay away from a chance like that. Well, then maybe this is our chance to hit them while they're gone. You was after information up there, Lord. Looks like you got it. Nothing can stop us once we got the Barclays. Ain't that what you said? No. No, it's too soon. Well, maybe we can do it ourselves. If it's that Barclay gal that's bothering you. She's got nothing to do with it. The only thing that girl means to me is information. The more she talks about a place, about her brothers, the easier it is for me to know exactly how to handle them. And I say we wait. Saddle on him, but he'll need careful handling for a few more days. Of course, he's going to cost you. How much? A couple of hours in town tonight, having supper with me at the hotel. Tonight? I don't know. It's, it's very short notice. There's a pleasure in doing things on impulse. Oh, I love being impulsive, but. Are you afraid of me, Audra? How could I be? You saved my life. I, there's a special reason why I want you to have supper with me. What is it? Well, it's kind of a celebration for us. For us? If it hadn't been for him, we'd never have met. Well, bye, Jackie. All right, Lloyd. Ah, where'd he come from? He's mine, a gift from Lloyd. That's a fine-looking animal. Saddle broke? Close enough for Audra to handle the rest. Uh-huh, we'll see. I'll call for you at six. You, uh, going someplace with him tonight, are you? Mm-hmm. To town for supper. Sure does work fast, don't he? Didn't have to say that. No, but it is true. And you think so too, I suppose. Well, I don't know about that, but he sure doesn't stint on the size of his come on, now does he? You're impossible, both of you. Heath. Round up the men. I'll get Jared. Oh, and uh, make sure they have supper. I got a feeling it's going to be a very long night. as good company as you don't. Oh, don't ever think that, Archer. It couldn't have been nicer. You're wonderful. Thank you. Past. 
Knowing you makes me forget it ever happened. There was nothing we could do about it. Was anyone hurt? We lost three horses. Four. How did it happen? We found this on the porch. They want $2,000 the next time it'll be the house. But I'll tell you what they're gonna get, nothing. They've gone as far as they're gonna go. Would you excuse me, Lloyd? I think I ought to be with my family now. Sure. May I call on you tomorrow? All right. <laughs> over the vet first thing in the morning. When he checked out, he's pretty badly singed. Snake spots. Could be I'm not making sense. Maybe not even worth mentioning. What? Garner? Well, what about him? When was the last time we saw him? This morning, when he when he brought that stallion. Yeah, and the time before that was when he was here for supper. What are you getting at, Heath? Both times he was here, so was Jamie Drum. Now, he could have overheard us talking in the hall. So was Silas in the hall. Nick, who else but our own could have known where we'd be this evening? Except Garner. Well, he, he was he was with Audra. Well, the rest of his pack of coyotes weren't, if they are his. Uh, that's mighty little to go on. It's more than we had till now. Audra, we saved that stallion Garner gave you. I'll tell him when he comes by tomorrow. Aren't you moving pretty fast? Why don't you slow down, little sister? You hardly know him. But I do. Yeah, what has there been, a week? That's long enough. Or am I still too young to see him again without getting your permission? Look, we've had a little bit too much on our minds to be pestered with callers. Now, we're all overwrought. Audra, come on, we'll get a good night's sleep. Nick? What was that all about? I don't know, I don't know, Jared. He's got some wild idea that Garner is mixed up in all of this. You got anything to go on? I do. Not enough. Let's hear it. countryside for miles around. <laughs> I bet we got every little old sod buster in this valley just a shaking in his shoes tonight. <laughs> but not the Barclays. Mm. Yeah, we'll know about that tomorrow. I know now. Funny thing about you, Lloyd. Being so sure you could get the Barclays. Looks like the only thing you can be sure of now is you can't. <laughs> well, me and the boys have nothing different. Since when have you or anyone else started to do the thinking for this outfit, Turk? Ever since you've been getting the information while we've been taking the risk. Well, you just remember this. I taught you how to stay alive. Without me, you'd be starving in some southern swamp, sniveling about what those Yankees did to you. Don't try doing the thinking again for this outfit, Turk. <laughs> Turk, you think them Barclays will pay tomorrow? If they don't, we'll burn their house. Would you tell Miss Audra Lloyd Garner's here? Oh, yes. Won't you come in? This way, please.
Well, hello there, Mr. Garner. Mr. Garner, may I get you a drink? No, thank you. Mm. You're here to see my sister. Yes. And her brothers aren't tactful enough to get out of the way. <laughs> well, she should be down directly. Why don't you come on over here and sit down, Mr. Garner? Right over there. Say, by the way, I imagine you'll be happy to hear we managed to save that fine stallion you gave Audra. I'm glad, for her sake. Must be worth quite a bit of money. Would have been, I guess, if I'd put him up for sale. You know, I don't like to offend you, but it kind of makes me uncomfortable to see a young man giving gifts he can't really afford. What makes you think I can't afford it? Well, we hear you've got quite a little family down by the river. Keeping them fed must cost quite a bit. We live a pretty frugal life. We've been living that way for a long time now. And we're not complaining. Well, now, that is a rare virtue. Especially for around these parts. Isn't it? Hmm. Well, I'll go see what's keeping Audra. Well, what about it? He's got the right speech. It could be him. And that horse out there looks like the same sorrel. All right, Jamie. You won't be seeing Audra today, Garner. Something wrong? Whatever's wrong is not with Audra or this family, but with the valley. And it's been wrong ever since you and your gang of Mustangers got here. Is that a coincidence, Garner? Or would you happen to know why? Do the Barclays always suspect a stranger when something happens? Only when there's good reason. Now, according to this telegram, the same thing that's been happening to the people in this valley happened in Santa Fe this winter. That's where you were last. Or is that a coincidence, too? It's not proof of anything else. Looks like questioning any man who's friendly with your sister is one of your favorite pastimes. Excuse me. Tell me something, Garner. Whose money paid for Audra's supper at the hotel last night? Was it the money you got from Mr. Graff? I'm not answering any more questions. Now, if you'll get out of my way. Couldn't have been Harry Coleman's. He turned you down. How about Hank Bauer? I know he's been paying. You're wasting your time if you think you can trick an admission out of me. I don't know those men. You're a liar. A liar, Garner. A cold-blooded liar. You put the squeeze on Coleman just like you did the rest of them, and then when he stood up to you, you shot him down. Isn't that the truth, Garner? Admit it! Isn't that the truth? Admit it or I'll beat it out of you! Get up! Get up. That's enough, Nick. All right. You're gonna tell me the name of every farmer you put your filthy hands on. Nick! Now tell me, Garner. What are you tell doing? Let him go! Let him go! Let him go! Tell me. Why? You better tell the sheriff. What are you doing? Tell her why? Tell her why? Let her tell you. She knows me better than you ever will. Let him go! It's all right. He won't get far. You. Audra. Audra, he, he's a cold-blooded killer. He killed his own father for a dollar. He killed Coleman. <laughs> Saddled up. Then we'll head north across the line to the Klamath. We'll meet at the falls. That's a far piece, Lloyd. I Don't argue. Just do as you're told. And you're giving up on the Barclays, is that it? And all that talk about owning half the valley after we got them? Wasn't nothing but talk. I misjudged them. They won't pay. You don't know that for sure. All we did was burn one barn. They'll change their tune after we burn the house. I told you we're moving out. 
Moving out's what he says. What he means is we're running. Hold it, hold it. Someone's coming. What are you doing here? I couldn't believe what they said without asking you. You shouldn't have come. Well, you said I know you better than they ever would. Do I, Lloyd? Do I? Show you. You know me better than they do. Better than anyone. But it's no use, Audra. It just won't work. I think I should know the reason. Forget it. Just mount up and go home, that's all. Why, Lloyd? What? I said that's all. Kind of stupid letting her go, Lloyd. Well, Barclay's pay now. Put the money in a saddlebag and leave it at Oak Flats before noon tomorrow. Do not tell the sheriff or anyone else if you want her back alive. I should have killed him. Seems we have no choice now. We have a choice. The same one Harry Coleman had. I know now how he felt and how much courage it took for him not to give in. There must be something, something we can do. What time is it? Two o'clock. Quick with the answers. Smart Alec answers shooting off my mouth of what I'd expect for myself if anything like this ever happened to us. Big, brave Nick Barkley. Big mouth, oh, Nick no, Barkley. Nick, don't. Don't! Don't what? Don't admit we're human beings because we are, and that's a fact. We're as human as anyone else. And when we're pinned to that wall, we pay. We have until noon tomorrow to do that, Nick. Jared, we can't take the risk of... I know the risk, Keith. It's just been promoted to number one. Permanent. <laughs> Got it. And without no information. Hundred, 
see that? Hundred, twenties. Look here. Got it. Got it. Huh? <laughs> right, I don't. In fact, she'd be kind of a nuisance all around, her knowing who we are and all. Let her go, Turk. We can be out of the state before they even know we're gone. Get out. I said get out! <laughs> Waiting in camp. Mm -hmm. 